I hope everybody is on board with what God is doing, because God is doing something in this church, and I think that's a reflection of what just happened. That worship set was powerful. Um, God is speaking through the leaders of this church. He's speaking through um, the worship and the word, and, and even through you guys, the congregation. God is speaking through everyone here. And I hope you're on board, and I hope you guys are trying. I'm excited for what God is going to do inside this church in this year, but also the coming years as well. So I, I hope you're on board. Cool. So this morning, I'm actually, I actually want to talk about the birth of Jesus for a little bit. Um, I know that we just had Christmas and we went through the Advent season. Um, but I think sometimes the birth of Jesus in that story and Christmas and the Christmas services and the Christmas Eve services... Sometimes I think it's very tradition, like it's our tradition to do that. There's nothing wrong with that. I don't, I don't mind traditions. A lot of people have great traditions. My family has traditions. But I think sometimes when it becomes tradition, it's just something that we do every year. And we maybe skip over the heaviness or the complexity of the birth of Jesus and what that means for us and the world. And it's actually kind of funny that uh, this morning starts the epiphany season, just like Pastor Billy was talking about on the church calendar. And it's the revelation that Jesus came for all the nations. It's when the, the Magi came and visited him and, and worshipped him. Um, and that is showing us that Jesus came for everybody. And so um, I kind of want to preface this message a little bit with, I know a lot of you are going to hear this today, and it's going to be something you've heard before. Don't tune me out. Don't, don't skip over this. Um, if it is something that you've heard before in years and years, I hope you take something away from it. If you haven't heard this before, and maybe this is your first time in church, like Pastor Billy was talking about earlier, I am so glad you're here. There's a purpose and a reason that everybody is sitting in this room today. Um, whether you've been here before, you've never been here before, it doesn't matter. There's a purpose and there's a reason that you're in this room. And I want you to know that God loves you. He, he loves you in the now. He doesn't love some future version of you that's better and cooler and better looking and have a six-pack abs and massive muscles and, and you know everything. He doesn't love that version of you. He loves the version of you now. And so I want you to be encouraged that he's going to go through the mess with you. Um, so let's go ahead and read Matthew chapter 1. I'm going to start in verse 18. This is how the birth of Jesus the Messiah came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the law, and yet did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife. Because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill the Lord has said through the prophet, the virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took Mary home as his wife. But he did not consummate their marriage until she gave birth to a son, and he gave them the name Jesus. Skip over to Matthew chapter 2. I'm going to start in verse 7. Then Herod called the Magi secretly, and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me so that I too may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way, and the star they had seen, when it rose, went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. 
They opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. So the first thing I kind of want to talk about this morning is the reason why behind Jesus had to be born. And in the most simplest form, the world needed a Savior. Um, in Romans 3, verses 22 and 23, it says, the righteousness, This righteousness is given through faith in Jesus Christ to all who believe. There is no difference between Jew and Gentile, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. We've all messed up. The whole world is messed up. We've all sinned. And plain and simply, the world needed a Savior. From the moment we were born till the day we die, we're always going to need a Savior, Jesus. And in Matthew 2, where we read, just read about the Magi, that's the first recorded um, scripture about Gentiles coming and worshiping Jesus. And so it doesn't matter where you're from. It doesn't matter your race, where you're located, your background, the way you were raised, whatever. Jesus is here for it. Jesus was born for it. And the world needed a Savior, and you need a Savior, and I need a Savior. And that's the most simplest way to break down why. Because we need him. And when we celebrate Christmas and we celebrate the birth of Jesus, we're ultimately also celebrating the gospel. Matthew 1, verse 21. She will give birth to a son. And you are to give him the name Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. So the birth of Jesus is the beginning of the gospel. Sometimes we talk about the death and the resurrection and that's obviously great that that's that part that happened. But this is the beginning of it, of God sending Jesus to be fully man and fully God all at the same time. It's part of the gospel. And even, it's funny, even as a baby, we were considered his people. And that weight, that heaviness was already on him as a baby. It's not like he grew up and then all of a sudden oh, this is why I'm here. Like, it was, it was the whole part of it. And that leads me to my next point, that it was all part of a master plan. Some 400 years before Jesus was born, God talked to Isaiah, and in chapters 7 and 9, it shows you how it's going to happen. 400 years before it happened, God revealed to Isaiah, and it was a prophecy about how it was going to happen. God was very detail-oriented about the plan of redemption. He knew the who, the what, the when, the where, and the why. All of it. He had it all planned out from the get-go. God didn't wake up some morning and go, oh, I don't know what to do. No, like he had an orchestrated plan from the beginning for your redemption. And it's kind of, it's kind of cool because when you see, and you see all this detail about the plan and the birth and how it happened and who was there and, and what was going to happen, it should show you that God cares. The other day I was thinking through this and, and I was going over my notes and I was thinking, I was like, because it's so detail oriented and it was all planned out, it shows me how much God cares. It's like when a spouse or a friend or a significant other, they do something for you. They plan an outing. Um, they get you something and it's your favorite color or whatever the case may be. It, and you see that they went into detail and they thought through it and there was a thought process behind it. You feel cared about, right? You feel, oh, this person thought about everything. I, I feel cared for. Like, seriously, shouldn't that happen to us when we read about the birth of Jesus? Like, that God, yes, he loves us, and yes, it's massive, and yes, it's huge, but it's also like, whoa, the God of the universe went into such detail that he cares about me that much. 
and cares about my redemption. And he, it, it, maybe, it just struck me. I don't know if it, strikes, if it strikes you, but it strikes me in a very deep way. Um, Jesus, he was also the last and final sacrifice. Um, in the Old Testament, we see God giving laws um, and directions to Moses about what to sacrifice, when to do it, what's it for, all that type of thing. But it was never really fixing the issue. It was only just putting a band-aid on it for, for the time being. It never really fixed what was, what was going on. And Jesus came to be that. And it's crazy, and I, I love this scripture. Hebrews 10.4 it is impossible, it is impossible for the blood of bulls and goats to take away sins. So that tells you right there that it wasn't, it, it was just putting a band-aid on it. It wasn't fixing the issue. The, the, the sacrifices in the Old Testament, they were there to atone for the sins, yes. But it wasn't fixing the problem. And Jesus came and he fixed it. And we have direct access to God because of Jesus, because of his birth and his life, and his death, and his resurrection, we have direct access. He fixed the problem. Um, and earlier, I said something along the lines of, God loves you in the, the right now. He doesn't love some future version of you. He loves you right now. And in Romans 5, 8, it says, but God demonstrates his own love for us, that while we were still sinners, Christ died. So Jesus was still that perfect sacrifice, even while we were messing up. I can't imagine what it must have felt like from a human perspective. Yes, Jesus was fully God and fully man, but from a human perspective of that, dying for people that were messing up, dying for people that would reject him, dying for the people that were killing him, and he did it because he loves you. He loves you in the now, and he loved them in the now. And here we are. And if you've, and if you've chosen to, to ask God to be your Savior and, and to, to forgive you of your sins, you now have direct access to God because of what Jesus did, his birth, his life. Jesus being born is God loving us. It was, he was actively loving us. God was actively loving us when Jesus was born. And I don't ever want to go through another Advent season or another year or another Christmas season taking this story lightly. The heaviness and the complexity of it blew my mind this year. And I, and I hope that it becomes more than just a tradition for us. It becomes a lifestyle. Something that we don't forget through the rest of this year. As we walk through the, the church calendar, I, I, and the next thing that we go through, I hope you don't forget the birth of Jesus and how huge it was. Um, I'm going to talk about a personal revelation that I had um, in a conversation I had with someone. Matthew 1.23, the virgin will conceive and give birth to a son. And they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. A couple weeks ago, um, Jessica and I, we were talking, and, and she was like, Christian, 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 have a sermon. And I was like, okay, cool, let's hear it. And she was like, um, Emmanuel, God with us. And I was like, all right. She goes, that's it. I was like, oh, okay, cool. <laughs> And, um, and, I, and we, were, we were talking about it, and we were thinking, and it, it was a personal revelation in her heart, in her own life, but also it struck me super deep. Emmanuel means God with us, right? So God, we've heard all our lives, God is physically with us. Um, he walks with you. He's talking with you. Um, go to the grocery store, the bank, whatever. But what he brings to the table is also with you. His characteristics, 
his nature is also with you. His love, his grace, his compassion and patience and his kindness and his forgiveness and his healing power is with you. God is with you, yes, but what he is and who he is is also with you as well. And I've been thinking about this and I've been mulling it over and um, I was like, what if, what if we actually walked that out? What if we fully had that revelation and we walked out in that and that God is with us and, and everything that he is, and everything that he brings to the table is also with us? How, how would our lives change? What, how would your workplace look? Who, who would talk to you? What would you say? Who would be healed? And it, it, it kind of it kind of blew my mind. And, and and I think of I think of Acts five. Um, in Acts five, it talks about people were bringing the sick to Peter, just hoping that his just his shadow would fall on them and heal them. None of that is Peter. Like, that's not Peter's power. Peter, that's nothing to do with Peter. It was God who was with Peter. It was what God brought to the table with Peter when he was walking. And his shadow was there. And people were just, like, just trying to get to his shadow. So what would that look like in our own lives? If we, if we did that, if we walked out in God and everything that he is, being with us. And it also kind of got me thinking about dun, 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 New Year's resolutions. And what if, what if instead of a New Year's resolution, we just resolve to, to love God more, to know God more, to seek Him out? Instead of a New Year's resolution about traveling more or eating healthier or reading more or getting more money. What if, what if instead of we did that, we set goals to, to memorize Scripture weekly? What if we set goals to read more Scripture on a daily basis? What if we set goals to pray more throughout the day. And I, and I think if we do that, we're going to sit down, and he's going to show us his word, and we're going to read his word, so you can check reading. Okay, got that off the list. Um, he's going to show you his word, so you're going to be reading more. And inside of his word, he's going to show you how much he loves his people. Okay, making friends and being nicer, checked off the list. And, and, you're going to see that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit. So you're going to want to take care of yourself more, I would hope. Check that one off the list. Okay, eat healthier, drink more water. And through that, you're going to see that everything is his. So this whole money thing, or making more money, or traveling more, or whatever, it's his anyway. So it's a gift. And so... I want to challenge you um, to walk out in, in who God is, that he's with you. Um, I'm not preaching against New Year's resolutions. Don't think that. But think of it as more as goals that we can, we can shoot for and we can strive for to know God more, to know him, to, to know what he brings to the table. He brings it anyway. So what if we tried to find out what it is that he brings to the table? Um, I'm almost done, I promise. I'm going to encourage you this year to, 
to strive to know God more. And I know I keep saying that, but there's going to be things that happen this year that are going to be unexpected. Bad things happen. Surprises happen. Um, I encourage you to let God push you through that. Making more money, your massive vacation in six months, it's not going to get you through the tough times. It's not going to get you through a family member being sick in the hospital. It's not going to get you through struggling with finances or, or anything like that. Only God is going to get you through that. And so if we fully walk out and we believe that God is with us and what he brings to the table is with us, we got this. And it's not about us. It's fully about him. It will always be about him. It will always be about God. Focus on him and focus on his word for your life. Let's pray. God, I thank you for this morning, and I thank you for every single person that's in this room. And Father, my, my heart is that we would fully realize who you are, and we would walk out in what you bring to the table. We would walk out in your love and your grace and your compassion, your forgiveness. And I pray that people around us would see you all the time. So God, I love you. And I'm going to pray, amen. Praise the Lord.